Hello, I'm Monica Price and welcome to Cuppa TV. Today's show is all about the music. I'm joined today by singer-songwriter Amanda Torp, who's flown in from Nashville, Tennessee. Also, I'm joined by an alternative indie band who have played all over the world. We welcome Susan and Catherine from Tall Poppies. My first guest I met in Nashville, where we filmed a Cup of TV special. She joins me today as part of her promotional tour here in the UK. We welcome back Amanda Torp. Amanda, welcome to Cup of TV. Thank you for having me. Wonderful to have you here in the studios. The last time we met, we were just having so much fun in Nashville, if you remember. So much fun. Wonderful. It's lovely to see you here. So, Amanda, you've come to the UK. First time for the UK for you? Very first time, yes, for England yes. area, yes. Fantastic. And how's it been so far? It's been a blast. I'm loving the, ac the accents. Yeah. Very <laughs> I said, we love yours. <laughs> They're very classy. I love it. <laughs> so, Amanda, you're here as part of your tour, and yes. you know you've got lots. I know you've got lots of meetings set up. You're meeting lots of people, mm -hmm. and we're going to hear some of your songs a bit later on. Yeah. But let's start right at the very beginning. How did it all begin for you? Um, I grew up loving music. Honestly, um, my first solo was at three years old in church. So it's just. The dream has continued. I never wanted to be anything else but a singer, and then um, songwriting came into play more after high school. Mm. So, um, was you writing at that point? I was writing younger? poems. I was very good at writing poems. I used to win all sorts of little competitions. Mm. I won like a bike. I won money, and yeah. <laughs> and I was like good at this kind of thing. And, <laughs> and did that kind of inspire you to carry on? It did. I don't think it did until my senior year of high school when I was starting to meet with the college and talking about the music business program. And like we started this new program called songwriting. Yes, I'm interested. <laughs> I'm Give there. Me a board. Sign up. <laughs> <laughs> and when and when you when did you sort of realise that this was something that you always wanted to do, or was it when you you know was it when you were very young? When, but when, was there a moment when you realised that this was actually going to be your career, your profession? I've just always wanted to be an mm -hmm. artist. And my old neighbour told me the other day, she's like, you know, um, you were a strange little child because you'd drink tea and then you would say, like when I would say, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a singer, you know? Oh. <laughs> she, she's like, it wasn't normal stuff, like ballerina, princess, no, it was, I want to be a singer. Always be a singer. And were your family very supportive of you? So supportive, so supportive. I moved to Nashville first for college and to start my music career, and then um, they followed three years later. Mm. It's interesting that lots of artists in America do move to Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think they do that? Um, just because it's the music capital of the world, it's just so well known for music and it is predominantly country or it has been in the past but now they're starting to infiltrate more brands of music like mm. the rock scene starting to get bigger, the pop scene starting to get a little bit bigger. Um, so people just want to be surrounded by music and greatness. Yes, I mean when I was there, I mean it is a songwriter's dream, it's a place really where artists seem to go because you, you do go into cafes and you'll just bump into songwriters, singers and everyone just seems to hang out with each other. Is it, is it like that? Yes, we're all very supportive of each other I feel like because um, we're all going through the same battle, the same dream and nobody else is going to understand you besides another songwriter or artist mm. because we're all kind of crazy. <laughs> do you feel though that, that you know there'll be, there'll be too many people? Do you think people just come to Nashville thinking I'm going to be a star? Is there, is there an element of that or, does, or do you not think that? I think everybody who wants to do music has that because they're the big shot in their hometown so they're like I'm gonna go to Nashville I'm gonna make it in two years. Mm. It is known as a 10-year town um, so the people who stay the longer are more likely to succeed. Really? So is that what it's known as? So 10-year town. So in other words, when you arrive, you've got 10 years before you can make it? Is that is that how they... Approximately, mm. approximately. Just, you know, it's just a matter of networking, working the scene. And people want to see if you're actually in it for the long haul, not just, I'm going to start try this out so for you're six serious, months and really. take off. Yeah. Right. And when, you, when you're there in Nashville, um, I mean, I was very lucky enough to go to Bluebird Cafe. Right. And, you know, but you've got very, very, very good um, places where you can gig. In fact, whole whole streets where you can just hop from one bar to another to you know to play your music. Mm -hmm. Is is that, again is that important to you? Um, I don't do the Broadway scene as much. Um, I do more actual venues. So mm -hmm. like, 
I love bringing my band to a venue called Third and Lindsley, or there was a, a venue called Twelfth and Porter. It's gone now, but um, just I like the bigger, bigger venues, venues because there is just a different appreciation um, for the music, and more business people mm -hmm. are likely to come out and come yes. see you. And when you when you play, what does it feel like when you go on stage? Amazing. Um, I would say there's probably like nerves for the first thirty seconds, and as soon as I hit that first note, mm -hmm. it's like. And where I'm supposed to be. And I mean, your music is very dramatic. Very. And is that you do that on purpose? That's that's yes. the way you like to write. Why is that, Amanda? What made you decide to write like that? Um, well, I did start off writing more of the country type thing, just because Nashville is very country based. Mm -hmm. um, but when I started going out to LA, I realized how much I missed acting. I started off acting as a kid. Um, and I was just very drawn to the dramatic side and Mike would dress very dramatically and they're like, I don't know if that country thing fits you. I was like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. I got it. <laughs> um, but I just started seeing things a little bit differently when I went out to LA and I was got to experience a new music scene. Um, not that they'd write like that either, but I think it's just a matter of I miss acting and that's mm -hmm. such a huge part of me that I pull that drama that you pull that in, into, into your music. music. And tell us about that. So you were acting at the age of three? I was I was probably five or six. Yeah. I, was starting, I was starting to do more of the stage, and I was always involved in plays and musicals mm -hmm. back home, um, always auditioning, and I loved, loved it. It was just such a part of who I was. Didn't matter if I didn't have enough time in the day, I was always there. <laughs> <laughs> and was that something you'd like to do in the future? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe you could incorporate your music. Right. I mean, there's lots of songs now, isn't there? That um, lots of films as well. That where Meryl Streep, for instance, is suddenly we found Meryl Streep's voice again, where she's in many films, um, and that seems to be quite a theme at the moment. Is that something that you would like to do, perhaps? Yeah, I think if it, if the right thing came along, I would I would definitely not mm. say no. Yes. I would <laughs> sign me up. Yes. Sign me on board. <laughs> um, so tell us. So you did some acting when you were younger. Mm -hmm. And then obviously continued with your singer-songwriting. But right. when did you first make what you call your break? When was when did it all sort of begin to happen for you? Um, I would say about a year ago is when I finally found who I was as an artist. Um, everybody kind of goes through that shifting through, and you know you're you're changing as a person even um, from child to a adult, um, and it's just a matter of weeding out certain people, certain things in your life um, to kind of go back to who you were originally. And that's what's gonna, you know, really relate to the audience is that's what they're gonna identify you as. That's what they see. They can see a fake person a mile away. So mm -hmm. sometimes it just takes a longer time for other people to identify who they are, what their style is. So what you're saying is you really got to be honest with yourself, both in your way that you present your music and the way that you write. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. And that presumably then that's because you your love of the arts. That's why you, as you said, that's why your songwriting is so dramatic. Yes. Now, when you were um, writing, do you go away and write alone, Amanda? How does it work? Do you sit at the piano and play? Um, I tinker mm -hmm. with the piano. Um, that's a very English word, a tinker. Tinker, I like that. I like it. Tinker. <laughs> Should I say British? This is, this is so British. <laughs> um, I would say I get a lot of my ideas driving. Mm -hmm. I work through things in my head, and you know, sometimes it's just a mental distress for me. Um, granted, gas is a lot cheaper in America, so we can just drive a little yes. bit farther. <laughs> um, but I would say my actual ideas come from driving. My melody ideas come usually as I'm trying to fall asleep. So it's so annoying, I'm like, oh, I gotta get my phone, voice memo, uh, yes, yeah. I'll figure that out so, tomorrow. And then, yeah. you know, yeah. play it out on the piano. And when you write, do you write pen and paper, or do you do it all into the glorious phones that we have now? Don't do any, you don't need to write down anything. But do you, do you use pen and paper? Because again, singer-songwriters, lots of them still use the, the pen and paper A lot technique. of Nashville guys do, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I think it's a balance between computer and paper and phone. Mm -hmm. um, it's whatever I really have on me at the time. If I go into a writing session, I usually just bring my computer because it's I can push things down yes. the farther they mm -hmm. go instead of scratching out and like what what does that say? Yes, you know. Um, but it's whatever I have on them mm -hmm. at the moment. Now you studied music, didn't you? Did you study that in Nashville? I studied songwriting in Nashville. S fantastic. And how was that? Amazing, amazing. I got to study under some of the top guys in Nashville. Um, so that was very 
encouraging, very hard, very, uh, it pushed you to be your best, pushed you to be better. Um, and like I said, I didn't really find my identity in college. I was kind of, you know, you kind of morph with everybody else. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm, I think I'm along this side. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I could fit here. Um, uh, but it was very, country writers are some of the best lyricists in the world, and that has really strengthened my lyric writing. Um, so when you'd turn a song in, they'd critique it, you know, go line by line, and then they'd sit down with you and talk about it. So it was really constructive. Then, Very really. constructive. So and how long was that for? Did you were there for a year or two years? Four years. Four years, yeah. So it's a long, intense, it is. intense course. So again, it, that probably weeds out the people that are perhaps not taking it so seriously and the ones that really want to move forward and actually make a career, make a profession out of what you do. Yes, and yes. Did, do people drop, I mean, did people drop out when you were there? Do people... You know, mm -hmm. say, this is just not for me. Mm -hmm. Some people, it's really hard because you have to have tough skin mm. to get through this. And if you don't, you'll get it fat, really fast or you just can't handle it. Um, and I wouldn't say I was a tough skinned person mm. when I went in, but I came out like, okay, that's, you know, that's, I mean, obviously you have to take things with a grain so of mm. salt because mm. art is art and people are either going to love it or you're going to yes. hate it. Um, so I think. I think it made me a better person, honestly, mm. um, and just a little bit more focused on what I can do as an artist. So how do you see the future, Amanda? What are you going to be doing? You've just Tell us about the, these songs. I mean, you're going to perform some after the break, so yes. tell us what you're going to perform. I'm going to perform a song called Spinning Gold, yes. which hopefully you guys yes, know. Yes, that's right. Well, you played that in uh, Nashville. I did, that's I it. did. I'm going to sing a new, brand new song called Legacy, um, and then I'm going to sing a very darker song. Queen of Hearts. Okay, so tell us a little bit about those. Now, tell us, first of all, the first one, Legacy, that's your new one. Brand new song. So tell us about that. Legacy was made because, um, you know how sometimes you just feel like this sense of greatness, like inside you, just bursting to come out. Um, it really stemmed from the fact that I don't want to just die as another tombstone that nobody remembers. I want to die as somebody that someone remembers, whether if it's just one person or if it's 10 million people, you know, you're going to be a legacy to somebody, mm -hmm. whether it's touching somebody just because they have cancer and being kind to them. Um, you know, you see all these encouraging commercials mm -hmm. on the street and they're like, you know, one person's actions, no matter how small, can make a huge difference in someone's life. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, so whether that, you know, that means getting to touch one person with my music or 10 million, I want to be, make a difference somehow. So that's where that's so, so quite an emotional yes. song and emotive as well. And, and, when yes. you, and when you were writing that, did you have all that in your mind? Is that how it kind of spilled out onto the page? I really just had the word legacy because I love the word legacy. Um, I think it's very regal, mm. very um, just, it's like the top of the top. Um, excuse me. And then when I was sitting down with my co-writer and talking about it, I just, words poured out, just poured out. I think the song was written in about an hour, honestly. Wow, that's quick. And yeah. then, now what are you doing with that song? Because have you, have you recorded it already? Is it available or going to be available? Tell us uh, about it. Well, since we just wrote it, like right before mm -hmm. I came here, it's not available yet. But we, when I go back to Nashville is when we'll start working on it and uh, recording it. You know, um, Fantastic. So it's going to be a Cup of TV exclusive. Cup of TV We exclusive. like exclusive. <laughs> Got to give That's the surprise. Great. So we like surprises. That's great. So tell us why you're over here. So what, what are you doing when you're here? You've, I know you've been to Europe as well as, as the UK, but tell us what you've been doing. Okay, so I've um, been taking lots of meetings. Um, I've got a couple shows coming up in, in London, mm -hmm. um, the 13th and the 15th at Surrey and the Bedford. Very excited about. Yeah. Um, and then that's it. Just really just start promoting my music over here and not just become an American uh, phenomenon. Uh, I feel like my music with the dramatic side to it would work pretty well over here. And I know a lot of pop rock bands have made it over here first. Is it important for a U.S. artist to, to feel they've made it in the U.K.? Um, for s I would say for some. For, for like my type of music, yes. I, I really want it to do well over here. I really want to start making my name for myself, even if I don't make it back in America. Um, 
some people it's really important to be known in America because they want to show up to their friends, hey, yeah. famous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, equally, but equally, you know, as you've just said, you know, lots of UK artists want to make it big in the US. But there is a, a great affinity between the two countries, even there though is. we're across the water. Why do you think that is, particularly with music? Um, I don't know. I feel like music is relatable on all levels and just like, a, like art is, everybody identifies to one thing or another. Mm. Um, I know country's starting to become more of a phenomenon over here, country music. Yes, it is, yeah. Um, it's huge back in the States, but mm. it's not quite over here mm. yet. Um, I don't know, it's, it's just a matter of broadening your horizons mm. and being able to touch somebody through your lyrics, music, beats, whatever you want to yeah. call it. Excellent. Well, we're going to take a quick break, okay. but stay with us. And then after the break, you're going to play some of your beautiful songs. So Thank it. you. So stay with us. We're going to take a quick break, but come back and join me in just a minute. I'm still here with Amanda, and Amanda, you're going to play some songs now. I am. I'm going to sing Wonderful. a brand new song. What are you going to sing? Legacy. Legacy. And this is off your latest EP, is it? Not yet. We're working on it, oh, though. Fantastic. So this yeah. is a Cup of TV exclusive. Exclusive. Fantastic. We like exclusive. Yeah. Amanda, I'll leave it to you. Perfect. I fade away So I'll be the one To bring the change I'm grateful for those arrested shines That held me down They made me stronger For What's to come, what's not yet done I'm gonna leave a legacy And create something out of nothing I've got For something greater, I'm gonna leave this life as a legacy. I'm gonna choose to make a stand I'll stand for justice among the helpless I'll make a mark they can't erase Become a memory Go down in history I'm gonna leave a legacy and create something out of nothing. I've gotta feel this destiny and be remembered for something greater. I'm gonna. 
I'm gonna leave this life as a legacy. you can play for us sure yeah what would you like to play for us next um what's a favorite of yours that you think the cup of tv viewers would like cup of tv mm, maybe spinning gold yes that's why i think you when because when i originally met you in nashville i think you played that one to me i did yes a cappella so this is spinning gold become the truth the truth is left unspoken hidden in the shadows lost inside and when your innocence is gone and the world is left you broken you rise by looking through a different pair of eyes so we can dance, 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 dance. We can fight, 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 fight. We dress up, hit the ground, wear a smile to believe our lies. We're just spinning gold. Spinning gold. We can fool. We can try to keep it under wraps till it unfolds. But we're just spinning gold. We're just spinning gold. In time you lose yourself. And kill the voice that guides you Living with a battle raging in your soul And you're afraid of what they'll see If the walls come down beside you Abandoned on the ground with the one you used to be so we dance, 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 dance And we fight, 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 fight We dress up, hit the ground, wear a smile to believe our lies We're just spinning gold Spinning gold We can fool everyone else and we can fool ourselves we can try to keep it under wraps till it unfolds but we're just spinning gold we're just spinning gold We 
we can try to keep it under wraps till it unfolds but we're just spinning gold we're just spinning gold don't see her coming she comes in through the night don't watch her closely she might rip apart your life in the blink of an eye before you know it she will steal his kiss look on his shirt then you might find a red lipstick oh she's got dirty tricks there are thorns behind that rose and I'm not the only girl who knows She's a devil on a throne Oh, the queen of hearts The queen of hearts One she's got him he ain't coming back you need a golden key to free him from her trap and a plan of attack heed my warning girl she won't think twice takes more than fire to melt her heart of ice welcome back to cuppa tv my next guests are based in east london but have australian roots we welcome australian twins susan and Catherine of tall poppies welcome ladies Hi. so let's establish who's who this is susan yes I'm and Sue. Catherine. I'm Catherine yeah. and identical twins yes yes Wonderful. So, <laughs> <laughs> lovely to have you both on the show. Now you form part of your four piece actually indie band, isn't it? But yeah. the other the other two couldn't be here today. No, they're but still in London because we're playing tonight. Oh, so, oh yeah. it's lovely to have you here. I'm so glad you could join us. So let's tell me about how it all began for you. Susan, I'll start with you. Well, Catherine and I have always played together, we sung together. We used to swap over and play piano and sing, and then the other one would change over and write a song. So We've performed together since we were kids yeah. and then decided to do something a bit more with it. Uh, so we moved to the UK and we've met Dear Matt and Doug and we've got this band, a four piece. And uh, yeah, we've got some we've gone from there, really. And, yeah, I mean, but it's, there. it's been a journey, hasn't it, Catherine, for you? And did you move to the UK just because of the music scene? Yeah, I mean, we've got an English mum, so we've come over since we were kids, just for like small holidays. Mm. And we just really love the country and we love London, so we wanted to have a bit of an adventure, but mm. also play music at the same time. So. so when was that? When did you move over here? In 2006. 2006, we both got on the plane, so yeah. yes. <laughs> wow. And what's been happening since then? I should imagine a lot's been happening, has it? Yeah. Yeah. So we've had the opportunity to record with some producers, um, Brian O'Shaughnessy, who recorded Primal Scream, Scream of Delica, which was wow. good fun. And um, yeah, we've just been recently recording with Paul Tipler, in the depths of South London, yeah, in an industrial state. So when you were yes, <laughs> often the recording studios are not in the best of places. <laughs> so as not when you break down yes, in the middle of the night. <laughs> when you're when you're writing your songs, do you write them together? Yeah, pretty much. Do you always not write of them, them together. Not always. Sometimes we write something separately, and we might come together and match our verses and choruses. Mm. So we end up with a complete song. 
or you might write a song by yourself as well. Do you have a different style? Do you have a different style? For Slightly each other? different, yeah. Because yeah. I'm on the bass a lot of the time, so I might write from the bass. Mm. Um, whereas Catherine might be more yeah. about guitar riffs and. I think I'm a bit more emotional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when I'm you're a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're writing your songs, do you write about? Is it about real life or is it just circumstances? What? How do you get your inspiration? Um, a lot of it comes through conversations that we're having with each other. So we might be talking and then it ends up being a song um, mm. because we start singing and with, someone's got a guitar in their hand, which can be quite funny. But um, yeah. other times we might think about a story that we want to... And because, you're, and because you're twins, often as twins you're, you're intuitive to each other's, you know, what you're thinking and, and, and doing at the time. Are you like that in your songwriting? Do you kind yeah. of, you start and then perhaps you'll come in yeah. and, and write so something? Yeah, so know where it goes or, yes. or what fits the other person's voice mm. as well yeah and 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 when you're doing that because it, it is a very distinctive sound we're, we're going to be hearing it which would be yeah. lovely um it how did you sort of get to that sound what what made you sort of write like that or did, did it just, just come naturally? it's just what comes naturally really mm. yeah it comes from singing along in the car yes. and then Catherine might take the the octave up not the octave up, the <laughs> <third> up. <laughs> <laughs> she might go an octave up <laughs> No, I just think she's showing off. Well, let's have a listen to what you're going to play. Let's okay. have a listen to a song now. So what are you going to play for us first? This song's called Susie. Okay. And it was written when we were in different countries. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Australia. Oh. Yeah. And you were here. Catherine was here. Yes, you were here so okay. yes, telling so me to come over. <laughs> Does that happen? Do you do you often are you always together or do you not always, no. sometimes we I'll go to Australia. Yeah. And how long did you go for? Yeah, a while, because I yeah, quite a while. was studying and <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 yeah. yeah. But so I mean so that's a very it's a very unique um sound, you know, and, and do you purposely make it like that? I mean it's a great sound. I yeah. think that we think we're we're not trying to be unique, yeah. but it does come out very differently yeah. from the standard pop. Yes, and as far as your fans are concerned, um, are they important to you? Yeah, you definitely. Know? Yeah. And when you're gigging, do they, do they sort of relate to what you're doing? You know, do they do they get in contact with you and say you yeah. know, give you ideas and things? Yeah, people yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. get in contact and um, yeah, they might come up with ideas for photographs and things like that. It's quite fun. Yeah. Or See, merchandise. <laughs> your, yeah, well, one of your videos, you actually dressed up as poppies. Yeah. Uh, so that was the one that I saw, and yeah. uh, you know, and. Is it is it quite again? It's quite quirky, but it yeah. works. Yeah. So, is that something you're trying to sort of be just to be a bit different? Yeah, I mean, we came up with the name, and then I think yes, tell us about tall poppies. 
Which tall, all poppies. obviously, because yeah. you're both lovely yeah. and tall. <laughs> well, yeah, I wanted something flowery, so I was thinking, I was throwing flowers, names at Susan, <laughs> and Susan suggested. I was, yeah, trying to go for something. I was trying to be intellectual about it. <laughs> <laughs> but tall poppy syndrome is a syndrome in, is known in Australia and the antipodes. Oh. I don't know it as something that people in the music industry do, cut down people who are successful. So it, it means, yeah, if you're successful, then you get chopped down. So and it comes from the tall poppy syndrome, oh, is the idea. Yeah. I see. It's interesting. So. And then when you, well, do you go back to Australia a lot, or do you, are you now based yeah, in the UK? A bit. So we go back for short visits now. Mm. Yeah. And are, you, are your family very supportive about what you do? Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Um, our brother plays drums, so when we're in Australia, he'll sometimes play drums with us or we'll gig. But, um, do you prefer to gig in Australia or here? Now be careful about that answer. Uh, <laughs> it really no. depends. Like, on, yeah. yeah. If you've got a festival or something, there's mm. a good vibe. It doesn't yeah. matter where you are in and the world. And you're gigging in London. So yeah. is it, do you tend to gig all over the UK? or? Yet? Yeah, we do. Yeah. We, we're trying to get out of London a bit more. And mm. um, so, yeah, this year we've played in South End and Wakefield and um, Kent. Kent. <laughs> yes. And, yeah. You have to come to Birmingham. <laughs> have you played, in, have you yeah, played yeah. in Birmingham before? No, no, so we've been looking at yeah. Yes, a, again, do you think the music cities. scene is, is is good in the West Midlands, or do you you know do, do you feel? Yeah, that I think it is. Yeah. yeah, it's very strong. So like when we've looked into to mm. doing it, you know, Manchester's very much keeping yes. to Manchester. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to play Salford soon, and oh, yeah, we should come across to Birmingham. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'd like um, to do. It. Excellent. Up. And w f let's go talk about you know when you were children, and did you? Uh, write when we were talking about writing songs, but did you do music at school? Was it always musical for you? Was it always going to be that career? It's always been a combination of things actually. <laughs> so what else so, could you have done? Well, Catherine's been doing fashion recently. That's the one yeah. in the costume. Ah, oh, right. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, it was <laughs> great. I loved it. I thought it was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we both like creative things, mm. so we were painting, but we were writing a lot of songs as kids as well. Mm. Um, we really loved the piano and we got into the guitar a bit later, um, but yes, so, I mean, we like lots of different yeah. things. Because we it would be interesting, because obviously you're a duo mm. as part of the band of four, mm. but what if one of you wanted to do something else? I know, it would fall apart. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can say on TV that's not going to happen if you like. <laughs> I once tried to play a gig because Suze was in Australia and I said, oh, I can play by myself. Yeah. To promote her, I guess now I like the duo. Yes. <laughs> you. Do you enjoy playing together? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. good fun. Yeah. And I mean, we were, you were talking about fashion. Is that something you'd like to do and continue? Yeah, Catherine? I mean, I, I started studying it because I, I kept making things and I became very interested in, in it. So mm -hmm. um, I do enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. But it's the combination. I've always loved writing music and making clothes as well. So. Yeah. And how about for you, Susan? What else, if you couldn't have been a musician, what else would you have wanted to have done? Um, I guess down the medical line. Of things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would you? A doctor yeah, yeah. or something like that? <laughs> And again, would you, do you see yourself being a musician for the rest of your life now? Now you've got to where yeah, you are. Do you see think, this is it? Yeah, I think we'll always be tall poppies uh, yeah. till we yeah. die. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So when are you well known in Australia? Have you got a really good fan base in Australia? I should imagine that you have. We're well known in Perth where we came yes. from. Yeah. yeah. And again, is that important to you that you keep yeah. those your roots there yeah, as well? Yeah, no, it's really nice. Um, so when we were over here, someone from Perth came up and said, oh my gosh, it's tall poppies. Oh, <laughs> how quite, lovely. Oh. Yeah, that was quite yeah, sweet. Nice. Um, yeah, it is important to, yeah. to yeah. Do, you know. And when you're, um, you know, when you're doing your gigs, when you're touring, do you always go together? Do all the four, four of you, you know, travel around together? Is yeah, that how it works? Time, it's, we're quite malleable, so if mm. somebody can't make it, then we adjust mm. our set. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we've, worked, we've done it all, it's all combinations, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. And your, you know, your brand of music being indie, do you think that's, I mean, indies, we're seeing a real big s surge of, of indie music at the moment. Um, so what do you think about that? I think it's great. It's great. Mm. It's Good for you. And electronics being very popular mm. of late. Um, mm. But I, I think guitar music, there's always a place for it. And people, yeah. everyone likes different music. So I think it's a good thing that indie is popular. Mm. Definitely. And will you always stay in that genre, do you think? I think it's hard for us to get out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I think we would like to... Yeah, well, we just start out doing some jazz stuff. Oh, yeah. did you? Um, yeah, yeah, when we were, you know, learning how the to... Jazz is very popular across the world. Yeah, we had a pianist and it was great fun. 
Mm. Would you like to perhaps dabble yeah, into that a, yeah. maybe a bit later on? Yeah, well, we've got a jazzy number we can play yes. later. Oh, yes. <laughs> we can hear it now if but, you like. Um, what do you, have you got another song you can play us? Yes, we can Fantastic. play Fantastic. What, what's it called? It's called Funky. Go then. Go okay. then. Play us this one. So this one's based on a true story. I was sipping on a cappuccino when he looked through the cafe window. Caught the eye of this familiar stranger. He turned away when he sensed the danger. So I left my post. Some things just can't wait. I sacrificed my dignity and chased him down the lane. You're too funky for me. You're just a little. You're just a smidgen. You're too funky. You're too funky for me. What you're doing this evening? Metropolitan Prince is keeping to himself despite the consequence. I ask him, is he on the shelf? It doesn't matter if he is, there's no way you'll get through now. His hair is much nicer than yours. You're too funky. You're too funky. You're just a smidgen. You're too funky. You're too funky for me. What you doing this evening? You're too funky for me. You're just a little. You're just a smidgen. You're too funky for me. What you doing this evening? song thank you so tell us the story about that then there's a story <laughs> behind there i can tell <laughs> no it's a combination of things yeah. like we spotted someone we knew in soho yes. a famous person yeah. ran after them in the street yes partly stalking them <laughs> so at the same time saying, don't worry about it it's <laughs> fine <laughs> yes yeah, got sorry, a haircut Susan. after that and yeah, yeah we had a free hairdresser you know he's oh, wow. offering so to do a, so you do haircutting haircut. for us to make us a bit more <laughs> oh, make a bit more funky yes. and a new pair of shoes i picked up on that one yes yeah. i like I think you have new shoes from the same area <laughs> so ladies what's the are you writing at the moment yeah yeah yes, we are yeah what are you doing at the moment what are you writing on oh all sorts of things um we're writing about going to America. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Dreaming we're writing of as yeah, a band, New York, basically. Yeah. We're yeah. finding some tunes. Um, and hopefully you're going to get some single out or an EP yes. out. Yeah. So the EP is out this month. It's actually um, out this high month. time. Fantastic. Yeah, and there will be another one to follow very shortly right. after. Mm -hmm. And again, are you, were you very happy with the way everything turned out for your EP? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 we do and like the sound of I think we, we like where we're going. Yes. So. And what's the future? How do you see your future, ladies? I think we will be recording another album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which, is there anybody you'd like to collaborate with or work with? Because oh. you're working with some good producers at the moment, aren't you? So yeah. is there anybody else that you particularly like to work with? Or um, Well, it might be nice to do some dance type remix of the songs. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah, so we know some people who, who do that. Um, good friend Dave, who's 
yeah. he'd be, uh, I think, suitable. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, even though nobody knows that name, I it's, just, it's just Dave. Dave. He's famous now. <laughs> it's Dave. Why ever say he's like a cup of TV? I don't know. It's fine. Yeah, would you? <laughs> and how about for you, Catherine? Is there anybody else that you'd like to work with? Um, do you know I hadn't thought about producers wise, yeah. but I do like the sound of camera obscura and the, mm -hmm. that kind of yes. big reverb sound. So mm. that, that kind of production would be really good. And what about festivals, ladies? Did you do you enjoy playing at the festivals? Yeah, they're good. Yes, we've... Have you played at festivals already this year? Where, what have you done this year? Yeah, so we went up to Wakefield yeah. and playing Clarence Park and then Ashford um, oh. Create Festival. Yeah. And there was going to be one in Cornwall, unfortunately it's been cancelled. Oh no! Yeah. So we'll be playing in Wanstead at the Wanstead Festival. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Again, is that a different audience? Do you, is that, you know, do you enjoy playing those to maybe just in a gig, you know, with a yeah. stage audience? I think because People are there anyway just to enjoy music mm. and then they might not be expecting mm. your sort of sound but they might like it and yeah. so yeah it opens up um, to new fans basically. New doors. Yeah. Yeah. So are you travelling at the moment? Are you going, are you doing anything in Europe or just in the UK we're, at the moment? We're based in London at the moment mm -hmm. so we've got gigs in London um, throughout September. Maybe. But that's where you'd yeah. like, but you'd like to do more? Yeah, we you'd were like definitely to looking music yeah. to, music to go up to around Britain and yeah. throughout Europe as well definitely. Yeah. Fantastic, and and it's you know it's it is a very unique sound, and I love it. It's a, it's a great sound. Will you continue to write like that? You know, you're going to stay like that. Do you think you you have found what you're looking for in your music? Yeah, I think I think you always want to change slightly, like we'll, mm. or move in a certain direction. So yeah. we'll keep the base of the sound, but make it a bit more. Mm. I don't know, we can add electronic elements, like we'll, we'll go down yes. that route. Or yeah. And you, you know. play the piano, you were saying, about piano. Yeah, we so do play the could, keyboard and you yeah, could, do You could incorporate that. Because your yeah. other band members, I suppose we better talk about them. So yeah, damn it. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> hello. <laughs> so what do they play? Is it drum? So damn it's on the violin, mm -hmm. and um, but he also plays piano, so yeah, oh. there's an opportunity there. And Doug is on the drums. Yeah. Um, Doug had played in a, a band called Noah and the Whale, which are quite big in the, in yes, the UK. Yes, yeah, um, they are. Yeah, so we're fortunate to have him join us as yeah, well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And the violin, I mentioned that would suit your sound. Yeah, we love the violin. Yeah. I think we were writing with the idea of string parts before we even met Diamet, so when we met him we... And did you meet him in the UK? Yeah. 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 He yeah. started playing with us for one song and then just managed to take him. Game five. Oh, ladies, well, I wish you all the best for the future. It's been so thank lovely you. to have you. Thank you so thank much you for you joining for having us. us. Thank yeah. you. So that's it for today's show. I'd like to thank Amanda, Susan, and Catherine for joining me today. And if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at Big Centre TV. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching, and come back and see me again very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>